Hey everybody, it's Chrissy here. And I just wanted to make this video to share with you some thoughts on what action you can take right now and see an immediate impact. And right now, if you've been seeing in the world what I've been seeing in the world recently, you've likely been feeling the urge to, to do something, anything, to help to make things better. And I believe fully in my heart that this is the natural reaction within all humans to reach out and support another human that's in need. And as overwhelming as our current situation is, trying to figure out what to do to help make a positive impact can be equally overwhelming. Do you give to those that were affected by the virus? Do you help those that have been displaced from their jobs and their businesses? Uh, do you help those whose property have been damaged? Do you give help to other countries that are facing str similar struggles uh, as what we're facing here in the US? And how do you know that your time, your money, and your energy is actually going to make a difference, is actually helping? You know, when we make when we help people feel better, we feel better. We're all connected. That's why all of this is so overwhelming and why we're feeling as much as we're feeling right now because it cannot happen to one of us without happening to all of us. And our eyes have just been open as to where this impactful energy is coming from and what's being stirred up out there. So when we help people feel better, we feel better. So I thought I'd share with you a few actions that you can take right now that no matter your circumstances, you will be able to see the impact that you are making and you'll be able to know that you're making a difference. Plus, I'm also going to share with you an action that you can take right now, immediately, instantly, and as often as needed to help yourself. So stick with me, check this out, and afterwards hop over to uh, my Facebook group, the Conscious Success Community, where I'll do a more in-depth uh, Oracle Oracle draw. I'll draw a card here while we're doing this message today. Um, and then I'm also going to make another invite if you want to take this conversation further and I'll let you know how to do that and what that conversation is going to look like. So I've been talking to my clients. I've been talking to people who've been reaching out for me to me for support, for guidance, that just need to know what to do right now. What do we do? I also have been in touch with all the different communities that have been affected by what's going on to find out what exactly is needed, what is expected, and what is the right action for us to take to be able to support people. The top thing that is on my mind, one of the biggest ways that you can make an immediate impact, an immediate impact, is to shop local, purchase something, anything, gift card, whatever it is that you can make a purchase from your local small businesses, especially those that have been impacted directly by the quarantine shutdowns, by the curfews that are in state now, businesses and small businesses in particular are really suffering. If you want to know an immediate impact that you can make, hire someone who has a service for a small business, purchase an item, gift it to somebody else, or even just consider donating or giving money because our, in, our incomes have been impacted. And I can tell you right now that every dollar that comes in, my family is so grateful for, so appreciative for, and absolutely every single cent makes an impact. I see it immediately. My family sees it immediately. My clients and customers, they see it immediately because I thank them for it and I let them know what a difference it makes. I'm not the only small business owner out there. There's so many of us. There's a lot of minority owned businesses that have been impacted by this. If you're feeling called to give in that direction and support in that direction, that is an easy step that you can take. Find out who is in your area. Find out what local impact, local businesses have been impacted. Do what you can to give in that direction. It is local. It goes to a family. You know that for certain, especially when it's a sole proprietorship or just one person who owns it. We're the ones that are keeping roofs over our heads, food on our table for our families. And uh, there's a good majority or a good sector of us that have been kind of slipped through the cracks that don't really fall into the grants that are out there or fall into the unemployment situation that 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 uh, support that's out there. So give to a local business. Definitely, definitely will immediately see an impact on um, on on what you're doing and where your money's going, where your time's going. Um, also, create safe environments. 
create safe environments for conversations to happen and challenge yourself to start uncomfortable conversations. Find a safe person to connect with where you can start a conversation that will help to move the energy that you're feeling inside of you. Whatever conflict, conflict you're dealing with inside of you, whatever injustice you're seeing out there in the world, whatever, whatever it is that's rising up in front of you, lean into that challenge yourself to face it head on and find a safe place to start conversations. I am going to continue having healing conversations here live through these video streams. I'm also going to take them on another level over on my Patreon page. So if you want to go to patreon.com forward slash CK Rollins, you will be able to plug into a more in-depth conversation. I'm actually going to hop over there and make a video right after I finish this one up. And what we're going to be talking about in that video is that I'm going to spend time over this next week sharing with you the five different energy themes that have stepped forward to be predominant for 2020. I shared them in the beginning of January before any of this stuff started to unfold, which I, I didn't see coming at all. So I thought it would be extremely helpful to revisit these five energy themes and see how do they pertain to what is happening currently in our society. And I'll tell you the first energy theme that I'm going to talk about today is around giving up blame and shame giving up and healing and letting go of blame and shame within ourselves and within others. And if you, again, have been paying attention to what's been happening in the world over the last few days, there has been a lot, and actually it's been going on for quite a while, shaming people who are symptom-free from, from going out and venturing and continuing on with their lives, shaming people for not wearing a mask. Some people are shaming people for wearing a mask. There's a lot of shaming that's happening as far as what, what um, judgments we're passing on each other and how we feel that our way is the right way. That's another energy theme that we'll talk about at another time. But how do we let go of shame and blame? And how is this opportunity or what is the opportunity that right now in society is presenting to us as we feel shame within ourselves over um, perhaps how we're uh, reacting as a people or perhaps um, as we reflect over some of the things that have been stirred up in our society. And there's definitely a lot of blame. We want to blame where this virus got started from. We want to blame uh, not being able to, to move around. We want to blame the people who aren't following the rules so we can all move through this easily. There's a lot of opportunity coming forward for shaming and blaming. And if you're somebody who has felt this overwhelming amount of shame that you have been carrying with you, be it stirred up from this incident, or maybe it's something you've been dealing with for a while, or if you're someone who feels like you're constantly being blamed and taking the blame or looking to see who's to blame, join this conversation I'm going to have over on Patreon because we're going to dive into it. What is right now offering us and how do we move past and let go and begin to heal blame and shame. And I love that it got opened up to this whole societal conversation around race factors and, and involving some of the invisible walls that keep us separated as humans from one another. These aren't comfortable conversations, but if you create a safe space for these conversations to be had, then I believe healing can happen and you can make an immediate impact. Be that starting a Facebook group or starting a conversation with friends and family or reaching out to someone that you you don't know and just erring on the side of looking like you don't know what you're doing in the effort to help somebody risk their judgment, risk their scrutiny for you wanting to start the conversation. And I assure you that what you will find on the other side, if you come with honest intent in your heart and authentic words from your mouth, even if you say the wrong thing, the right person will receive you and will open up space for you to continue a dialogue so that we can move past what we have been shoving down, sweeping under the rug, not talking about because it's so un comfortable. And we've become a society in which not only are we creatures of comfort for ourselves, but now we advocate for the comfort of others and we suppress ourselves so others can be more comfortable. And at this time, we are obviously all uncomfortable together. And the way that we heal this is not by shoving everything back under the rug, not by stuffing everything back down, not by shaming or blaming yourself or other people so that we can come to some kind of conflict resolution. It's going to come through more effective effective communication, more honest, vulnerable communication. And that's going to happen outside of your comfort zone. 
I'm committed to being and creating safe space for conversations, I invite you to think of this video not as me showing up and telling you what to do, but as me engaging in a dialogue, starting a conversation with you to see if there's something more that we can do together. I'm not saying my perspective is right or the be all end all. I'm saying this is what works effectively for me. I have felt the power of approaching life from this direction and I am open to discussing it from other angles to see what we can collectively do together as we evolve together in this American evolution, which is going to require evolved communication, evolved conversations, and it's going to take a different thing from all of us than what we've been doing before or else we're just going to go back to what we had before and I don't think any of us really want that we don't want to stay where we're at we want to continue to evolve and hey Jean I see that you're here so glad that you're here and thanks for chiming in Jean says this is a topic I wanted to write about a couple of months ago and now it's more present than ever very uncomfortable for sure. That's when I thought about this, like what are the actions that we can take? We wanna take actions, but we want to make sure that the actions that we take actually represent what it is that we're intending with our actions. And many of us, because of the blame, because of the shame, feel like we can't step forward. Who are we to start these conversations and to dare to say the wrong thing and offend somebody or make the situation worse? I assure you in this situation, if you're holding back your truth, that silence is not the productive kind of silence. That's the silence that needs to be broken in our society. And the kind of silence that we need to embrace is holding the space, withholding judgment and allowing people to express. And if you're going to make judgments, if you're going to make assumptions, err on the side of love and wholeness instead of whatever it is that we tend to do in our society. Jean says, nonviolent communication is a huge topic. I was involved in a group a couple weeks ago, for sure. And Jean, if that's a conversation that I can join, add me into the group, girlfriend, because I'm happy to hold the space to use language as a vehicle for healing and for understanding and for deeper connection um, between all of us, between all of us humans. What else have I got? So join conversations, create conversations, start safe space, hold safe space for conversations. Be the one who risks getting uncomfortable in order to make change. Change is not comfortable. Comfort is comfortable. But I'm not about like not having a comfort zone. I love a comfort zone. Are you kidding me? I just want to be able to take my comfort zone around with me and not have it shook up because of the choices, the actions, or the words of other individuals or society itself. That to me is freedom. That to me is liberation. That to me is what it is, is, is the wholeness and the fulfillment that I know I've been seeking. Whenever I dip into that, all of a sudden everything else just seems to work. So it's my intention to bring these words over to you to start a healing journey within yourself. Just take this conversation back over and reflect on it. Drop some comments below. Let's talk further about it. Jesus, I grew up as a privileged white person in Southern Africa, and that is also um, hectic, for sure, for sure. I don't think that any of us have that, that um, it, none of us have it easy right now. I think that this conversation is one that is um, been placed on us to begin the healing conversations, and it starts with talking about it. We, it begins by talking about all of it and not taking any of it personal, but just hearing what other people have to say, because your experience is your truth. Truth is a direct experience, and until someone has had your experience, they cannot argue your truth. And it has validity and the ability to hold the space for another who is hurting without taking on their pain yourself is a powerful skill to develop, one that is really worthwhile. And our ability to feel and allow others to feel without having to take it on or even have to make it better because some of the discomfort that we're feeling right now, the problem is, is that we keep scooping each other up out of the comfortableness. I talked about this a while back. Are we letting ourselves off the hook with all of our good vibes and positivity and think positive? And do we need to have a more honest conversation that is uncomfortable in the beginning, but can lead to greater comfort overall? All right, I'm gonna pull forward this mermaid card so I can let y'all get on with your day. Thank you so much, Jean, for being here and for chiming in and adding on to the conversation. Let's for sure keep it going. And let's see what the mermaids have to say about this. What do the mermaids have to tell us today? Ooh, they jumped out differently. Wow. I think they picked up on this last part of what I'm saying. 
Okay, this is actually card number um, 45 in the deck, which is the very last card in the deck. And when the last card comes forward, it always symbolizes the ending of something old, the closing of a chapter, the ending of an era. I think we might be there right now. And this card is Imrama, Imrama. And the message on it is wonder voyage, crossing deep waters, pilgrimage, journey of the soul. And that's exactly what each of us are on right now, regardless if we realize it or not. Regardless if we're quarantined or if we're still working essential jobs, whatever it is that we're going, that we have going on right now, we are each on our own soul journey. And just like this lovely mermaid, she's not swimming in the ocean. Okay, let me talk about the ocean real quick. Let's talk about water. Waters, especially with mermaids, represent emotions. She's not swimming in the emotions. She is in the safety of a boat. She is being held afloat above the emotional water so that she can get a different perspective than just swimming in the ocean, being with all the emotions. So she's taking a step back. She can see that she has an ally. She has a friend. She has a guide. She has someone there to swim along with her. And what Imrama means in folklore uh, perspective, or maybe this is uh, something that people really embrace still currently to this day, Imrama is a soul journey. And what would happen is that you would go on a boat, you would travel across these waters, and you would journey until you found yourself. And then you would journey yourself back home again. And that's what this card is inviting you to do. That's what all of this is. It's a giant Imrama for all of us. We are all on a soul's journey of self-discovery to figure out who we are. Because if you don't know who you are right now at this time, you are getting shook up. All the blame, all the shame, all the everything that's getting thrown out there, you are susceptible to. You are taking it personal. It feels like it's all happening to you. And it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. For you to connect to this feeling that's inside and for you to take time above the water out of the emotions to do some honest reflection and some honest navigation about where you're going and how it is that you're traveling to get there. So I invite you to take some time to reflect on what is that deep soul journey. And if you want some more reflections, join me over in the Conscious Success community. I already posted three cards uh, for today's spread and they are awesome. I gotta tell you, I'm very excited about them. I might even go on and do a video to talk about them instead of just posting um, the reflections once I post the reveal. So let me know, what are you doing um, or what have you done or what are you seeing that is needed to be done? Drop all of those in the comments below. Uh, share your thoughts, your needs, your actions, and um, the actions that you've already taken or the actions you've been considering taking. And let's keep that conversation going here. Let's learn from each other. Let's be inspired. Let's all evolve our level of communication together. And uh, remember you got this. I know it's intense. I know it's uncomfortable. I posted that today, but that's what the birthing process is. It's intense and it's uncomfortable, but we're birthing forth a new world and what is not needed must die off. It must shed away. It must be let go. And part of what we need to let go of in our society and within our own selves is the shame and the blame. And if you want a deeper conversation, jump over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Chrissy, or excuse me, forward slash C.K. Rollins, R-O-L-L-I-N-S, and uh, plug into that conversation. I'm going to start it right now, and we're going to keep it going. So I love you. Stay strong, stay focused, and uh, be the change. I love you so much. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing this. Pass it along and share your thoughts. Okay.